morning one and all the para welcome to its continuing series of zoom meetings today is a change of topic this topic is stock verification and the speaker is vp raghuram senior inspector of source accounts south central railways hyderabad a brief introduction of sir raghuram sir raghuram has been more than 25 years of service as an isc is a he has qualified in all the three groups of the appendix p examination he has been a regular faculty at sitara and engineering uh, training center at singapore besides also taking classes at pirithu we are very happy to have him share his experiences as an isc and i hope that all the participants of this session will be benefited by his lecture thank you over to mr raghuram Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, is it clear? Audio is clear. Yes, yes. Okay. Shall I share the screen, sir? Yes, sir. Now it's visible. Ah, yes. Now it is visible. Okay. If if all are ready, we'll start the lecture, sir. Yeah, yeah, they are all ready. Okay. Okay. Join. Yeah, join okay, right. Right then, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, welcome to everyone and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, very happy to be part of this uh, online training session that is being conducted by Sitara. <laughs> It keeps you going in these tough times. Uh, there is a lot of trouble everywhere. Everyone is down with some some problem or other. so these kinds of sessions will definitely help you to have a diversion from the regular routines what you are seeing or what you are listening so this may be a useful uh, overall program which is going on uh, in sitara and uh, i hope this this particular lecture also will be of some use to all of you <coughs> Today's topic is about stock verification. So before actually going into the methods of stock verification and how we conduct stock verification, uh, let me tell you some uh, something about this cadre. That is stock verifies the cadre and what importance actually it uh, uh, contributes to the management. Brown sir. Yes sir. Please keep it in the presentation mode. presentation sir ha ha sir ha please put the presentation mode i will now now can you see yeah we are able to see but please present the presentation mode so presentation mode the bottom right side okay bottom right acha this one now okay okay now this one okay okay now correct right then. so before we go into the details of stock verification let me tell you about this cadre this cadre of stock verification consists of two uh cadres basically stock verifiers they are the backbones of this cadre and senior iss who are the supervisors of this cadre so senior iss as you all know are uh, qualified from the appendix 3a uh, exam conducted by railway board it is one of the groups in appendix 3a and uh, stock verifier selections generally happen right from the cadre feeder cadre that is uh, as preferably then js then acs and sometimes we take uh, staff from cash office also who have qualified in 2a that is the basic criteria they should have qualified in 2a and they should have put in some service in case they are ac 5 years service or something but those are selection process for asv scatter and asv scatter there is no other method of infusion it is only through selection from the existing cadres that is acs or jas or as and or from cash office also senior iss yes 
they are qualified in appendix 3a examination and uh, they are looking after the stock qualification supervisory role and asvs will do the field work nowadays because of shortage of asvs senior iss are also attending to initial works and conducting stock verifications themselves but overall the cadre is uh, more or less uh, there are many vacancies all over the zones all zones on indian railways they have plenty of vacancies but it's a very good cadre and a very good exposure one gets while working as senior isa or asv so that is about the senior isa and asv cadre who will do this stock verification job the purpose of stock verification uh, the physical balance match with the books maintained by the store holder now what do you understand by this it is very simple see i'll give you or i'll take an example of pwi i think everyone is aware of or heard about pwi he is the person who maintains track in divisions so he will have a jurisdiction of say around 50 kilometers it is double line or slightly more if it is single line but in any case he has to maintain his track in the jurisdiction available under him and in doing so he requires material now what are these material pv material like say rails sleepers different types of fittings and other things for all these types of items he has to maintain accounts at his unit so they are called the store holders these store holders we have in uh, all the departments say uh, all the engineering departments we have maintenance store holders all the um, uh, offices we have because we have to maintain offices also and similarly in all the training institutes everywhere you have these store holders every office also will have a store holder medical department hospitals there will be a store keeper who will maintain the books he will keep a track of what material is received and what material is issued for works so after checking all those things there will always be a balance of material available and those balances are your called generally as book balance or the ledger balance which are maintained by the store holder so how much of computerization has gone into it that all we will see in the slides that are coming up but uh, basically a custodian or a store holder will maintain books for the material he is handling so when we do this verification the main purpose is the physical balance match with the books maintained by the store holder if physically if we find 10 pieces of say uh, keyboards 10 keyboards if we find this book also should show 10 in case there is a difference we will issue it as a discrepancy so that is the first purpose physical and if we go by physical uh, checking if we find physically that only we will set certify whatever is we located or seen physically we will go only by that he may maintain books for anything but what we physically see that only we will certify so it is a physical verification that is the most important thing and because it is physical verification it cannot be done in any other way you have to personally go to the unit you have to go to the field you have to go to the unit and conduct the uh, stock verification by physically noting down the material available that is what is called as recording of inventory so our verification number one is physical that is number one second is the description of the stores available in stock that is what is available physically should match with the description maintained in the books that is the most important aspect of our check in 10 available on ground 12 available in books there can be a stock sheet there can be a discrepancy but what 10 available in on ground should match the description maintained in the books i'll give you a very very simple and easy to understand uh, example <laughs> this is all part of introduction only we will proceed if you are thorough with this or if you are clear with this you will understand the subject very quickly so i'll give you a very simple example uh, samsung telephones all of you uh, must be seeing them or using them mobile phones basically they are available from 3000 rupees onwards up to 50000 so if a unit holder is provided with say 25 mobile phones those 25 mobile phones for their use as a department for their use for supply to staff or for any other purpose they have been provided this 
25 mobile phones. Now these 25 mobile phones were purchased giving specifications that 10 will be of 3000 variety, 10 will be of 30,000 variety and 5 will be of higher variety that is 50,000 variety. So now the book also should show that he has got 10 of 3000 variety, 10 of 30,000 variety and 5 of 50,000 variety. Now here he can easily manipulate the store holder or whoever is the person maintaining the account. He can easily manipulate it by writing all the 25 as 3000 rupee ones and keeping all the 3000 rupee ones in stock. So his book says 3000 rupees telephones, mobile phones, 25 numbers. Round also he has kept 25 numbers, 3000 rupees foods. Both are matching. So the ground, there is no excess, there is no short. In books, there is no excess, there is no short. And how do we assess or how do we come to know that whether these have been supplied to them or is there any other way? So for that purpose, we will check the description from supply vouchers. Now whenever a material is supplied from any unit or from any purchase from any outside agency, there will be a delivery challenge. And before that, there will be a purchase order. An order will be placed on him to supply so and so description material. Now, as per that order, when we ask for the custodian for the order, he will simply say that, no sir, somebody came and handed over these 25 telephones of 3000 rupees. Immediately, I have entered the person's name and other things, all I have written, sir, I don't have any vouchers. Something like that, he will tell and he will remove all available vouchers or all the vouchers which are actually connected to the transaction. So now we have a suspicion This yes 25 telephones are available 3000 rupees each books also shows 25 so we will what we will do is we will just note down the transaction and then we will come back to our office and then we will try to connect the purchase order the purchase order must have been placed for different varieties that is 10 of uh, 3000 rupees 10 of 30,000 rupees and 5 of 50,000 rupees. So when we connect the purchase order, immediately we can go to payment side also. How much money has been paid for that? And who has actually acknowledged the receipt of material? Because whenever a material is received by any person, he has to acknowledge it and sign it duly giving the ledger reference and other things. So there we can immediately know that who has received and what were the material supplied and what was the cost. So immediately what our people, they will check these kinds of uh, vouchers, that is supply voucher, that is the purchase order, then the payment side, that is the bill passed. And one important thing or one thing which helps our stock verification section is all the bills are generally paid in accounts office or are passed in accounts office other than the small impressed items. All major bills are passed in accounts office. So we can access these bills or these past uh, bills details from our offices and we can always connect and link. And now finally when we link it, what is the ultimate result? 10 of 3000, 10 of 30,000 and 5 of 50,000 have been supplied. Instead of that he has kept 25 of 3000 rupees. So it's a clear case of manipulation. So therefore, how we deal with it is, that's a different thing. But basically, I am trying to focus on the point that the description should match the stock available. And for description, we go to connecting watches. That is most important thing. Any person receiving any material in the US will always receive with stores watches or with direct supply. If it is a direct supply, he will have uh, uh, this delivery challenge or invoices and all those things. So without that, he cannot receive. And if he says that those papers are not available, there is definitely something to be doubted. And therefore, we go to other areas like purchase order linking or payment linking. Like that, we can easily connect what exactly has been connected. So the description is most important for us. Now you can see 25 phones of 3000 rupees will cost you only 7500 sorry uh, 3000 rupees 25 means 
85,000, something like that, or 75,000. Whereas, if you go by 10, 3,000, 10, 30,000, it is going into lakhs. So, the manipulation is there for lakhs of rupees. Therefore, the description is most important for us. And for reaching the correct description or for knowing the correct description, we can always go back to the purchase order, we can always go back to the payment side. So, that is how we try to link. Then, second thing is, it's a physical verification, I told you. So, we do the verification by count. And in case an item is supplied in numbers, we count by numbers. In case it is supplied in meters or running meters or in any other measurement in this thing, then we will measure it. Or sometimes it is supplied by weight, we will weight. So, these are the different measurements include liquids also. So it can be liters, it can be kiloliters. So all those things are part of measurement only. Payment we generally do for uh, scrap items which are available or which are uh, disposed of by payment. So all the three methods of verification are there. Counting, measurement and payment. Uh, now significance, significance of uh, stock verification, let me tell you. Stock verification is the only agency which verifies the expenditure account of the stores. Now material is procured by stores department, it is kept in the stores depots. From there, the custodian or the PWI will take the material, he will use it. So whether that usage is properly done or not, there is no other authority or there is no other agency which can check those things. There can be a test check by controlling officer of that unit or there can be checked by departmental officer but they are not as exhaustive as we do that is stock verification by accounts department. So we have a set periodicity and as per the periodicity we cover all the items. We don't have a percentage check so far as the number of items are concerned. We cover all the items, we check all the items and we certify all the items. So the stock verification is the only agency which verifies the expenditure account and how the material has been used. So here there can be some mistakes. Here there can be some uh, deliberate mistakes or deliberate uh, effort to create some fictitious transactions also. So all those things will come, we will come and we will examine as per the supporting vouchers. So that is the most important part of stock verification, that is expenditure account of our stores. Then check the correctness of account of released material from various types of track renewal works, like say, CTR or TFR or TRR, points and crossing renewal, etc., which eventually lead to scrap arising and scrap sales. Now our railways interestingly have very, very uh, good system of uh, scrap disposal and uh, we go on doing track renewal works every year if you notice in the budget they will say total uh, 20,000 kilometers will be renewed this year track renewals 20,000 kilometers is targeted or new lines some 500 uh, kilometers targeted something like that they will go on announcing in the budget so it finally is divided into different zones and each zone will have about 200 to 300 kilometers or 500 kilometers of track renewal. So whenever track renewal will take place, the old track is renewed, that is old rails are renewed, replaced by new ones. So we are putting in new rails and we are taking out old rails. So when we are putting in new rails, that unit holder or the PWI whose jurisdiction the work is happening, he should receive new rails. We should receive all the fittings required for executing the job. Say if it is a complete track renewal, it needs uh, sleepers also, fastenings also, fittings also. So all those things will come to that particular unit. It will be supplied to that unit to complete this track renewal work. So new arrival of new material is one aspect. This material is issued to the contractor to lay in the track. And once it is laid in the track, the old material will come out. So old material, how much it has to come out, again, it depends on the work you are executing. So it will be generally matching. In the sense, rails will match 100%. Today you are having a track which trains are running. Tomorrow you are replacing one portion of that track. 
So how can there be a difference? So the rails will always match 100%. Sleepers may change because the density is sometimes increased whenever you are doing a special work. So the density may increase. So if the density is increased, we will issue more slippers and release will be less because the previous density was less. So like that, least account also we are 100% uh, <laughs> So, released account is also very important. Always remember when you buy new material, you are paying a lot of money. When you release the old material and you sell it as scrap, again it is generating a lot of money. A lot of money is generated as scrap sales. So, correct, accurate account of all the release material is very important. And for that, that is another very important aspect that is checked by the stock verification section. Now we also have a role in scrap sales. There will be a separate lecture uh, possibly on scrap sales and related activities and system of scrap disposal. If it, is, if it materializes, we will have a detailed discussion on that. But ISS and ASV is associated in scrap disposal also. That is, whenever a work is to be taken up, as I told you, a bad renewal work. So before the work is taken up, we will conduct a joint inventory of the material available and that are likely to be released. So we will conduct a joint inventory and this joint inventory is done along with the custodian or the storeholder in whose custody, in whose jurisdiction this work is going to take place. And we also have the contractor or his person who is going to execute the job. So this joint inventory process will start only after awarding of contract. So after awarding the contract, contractor's person, the custodian or the PWI who will oversee this work, and account stock verifier or ISA. They will conduct a joint inventory. They will note down all the material that is likely to release from this particular work. So once that released account is totally finalized and summarized, then work will take place and that much of quantity the contractor has to hand over back to that custodian. That is the idea of the joint inventory. That is one stage where we are involving again. Then in conducting scrap surveys, so whenever any material is not required for railways, it is disposed of through scrap sales. And before disposing of, there is a method called, there is a process or a procedure of survey of scrap material. This happens only in case of line lots, line lots in the sense, line lots, scrap lots which are formed online. Those material which are brought to scrap depots, there we are not conducting. Service. Survey will be conducted only for line notes, that is, which are formed wherever they are generated. That is second thing. And then at the time of witnessing of delivery of scrap material also, we will be available there. So that is our role in scrap sales. This is very brief. How the process takes place, we will definitely have one more session. Now, we are all talking about stores being supplied to different custodians or different custodians of different departments. Now, who is in charge of all these stores? So, there is a stores department in each and every zone, each and every production unit. And that stores department has four distinct roles. Their job is to procure material on behalf of all other departments. And as and when they receive the material, they place an order, supply will come. So when they receive the material, those material have to be stocked somewhere. So that from there it can be used whenever required. So for storage of such material, they are having a depot system of depots. They are having depots located at different locations. So material will be received in the depots. It will be stocked in the depots. From the depots, it will be supplied to the executives. That is point number three. So that is third major function of stores department. And fourth is disposal of scrap material. So stock verification works in close association with stores department. But 
material will be available in depots. There we do the verification. Material will be issued to workshops. There we conduct the verification. Material will be issued to open line units, that is PV units or mechanical units or SMT electrical. There also we conduct stock verification. So, store, functioning of stores department and stock verification, they are uh, generally interlinked and we are available wherever there is a depot. So, we regularly visit those depots to conduct our stock verification. Now, coming to the technical aspect or the uh, provisions of board stock verification, although it is an account stock verification, we are following we are following the stores code only for this and stores code is giving all the details of how stock verification has to be conducted. Stores code chapter 32 volume 2. If you go to that, there are about 5 or 6 pages in chapter 32 and chapter 33 also deals with stock verification only. You can just go through them. There will be periodicity, at what frequency we have to conduct the verification, how to conduct the verification, all the details are given there and uh, how to deal with the stock sheet, everything is given there in chapter 32 and 33 of stores code volume 2. Now that is our base. Now <coughs> functionally, the head of the department for stock verification is FNCO stores and workshop and uh, under him, work stock verification is conducted in different units. Sometimes the stock verifiers are under workshop accounts officers, attached to workshop accounts officers and workshop accounts officers are attached to, are working under the control of the FNCO SNW. So FNCO SNW is the principal, our HOD for this department, that is stock verification and under him deputy CAO or FNCO or WOs and under him ISS and ASVs they will be working. So each these units that is workshop accounts units or other ISAs who are looking after divisions. They will prepare an annual stock verification program and that is submitted by all the field units, that is divisions and workshops. They are submitted to headquarters of that particular office where FNCO SNW is available. Now once that is available, what we do is in headquarters for every year we assemble the data supplied or we uh, receive from various units and the workshops and we will consolidate and prepare an annual stock verification program. This annual stock verification program is nothing but details of the units which we will be taking up for verification in this particular year. So every financial year we prepare a fresh annual program of stock verification and this annual program the process starts from February itself and generally by uh, March first week we put up to our FNCO SNW for his approval. So these are the units we will be taking up in these divisions, so many units, this division so many units and this workshop so many cards and so many depots. So like that all the details will be put up to him and he will go through it and he will approve the stock verification program. So approval of stock verification program is uh, centralized at FNCO SNW generally approves the stock verification program. Once this is approved, then we will actually move to stock verification. So the stock verification, as mentioned in chapter 32, broadly we are conducting stock verification in three areas. And these three areas are stock verification in stores depots. Stores depots means wherever there are, stores are kept. They are procured and kept there. From there, each departmental officer or departmental unit holder will take away the material. He will draw the material and he will take and use it in his unit. So the new material received from suppliers is kept in stores depots. So there we conduct stock verification. That is called depot verification. That is first branch of stock verification. Second branch is Verification in open line units like say SSC PV units, SSC CNW unit or electrical units or SND office, SND uh, engineering units or maintenance units. Similarly, offices, stations, everywhere, everywhere there will be some material that we will conduct our stock verification. So, open line units.
units are the units where trains are running. They are generally under a division. Trains are running there and for maintenance of the uh, machinery and material, uh, some maintenance units are opened by the, each department. So suppose there is a uh, SSC electrical. He will have under him a couple of workshops where he has to ensure that electricity maintenance is done completely and properly. Similarly, some uh, offices also. Similarly, some quarters also. Online, that is, from station to station, he will have a jurisdiction of, say, 10 stations. In all these 10 stations, he will maintain the quarters, all the requirements of quarters, electrical requirements, he will maintain. So, like that, they are all maintenance units. So, we will do verification in this, these units. It is called open line verification. Third method of verification or third branch is construction. Verification in construction units. There will be projects. Construction means always projects. A gauge conversion project can be there. A doubling project can be there. A new line project can be there. Or a uh, <coughs> tripling project also. That is also going on fairly at a good speed. So, tripling, batch tripling, wherever there is more traffic and more density, traffic density is very high, there we are laying a third line, so that movement becomes faster. Trains need not be held up for that. So, we will study and uh, the traffic department studies the requirements and then they propose and such uh, projects will be taken up by the construction organization. So, construction organization also we are conducting stock verification. So, three broad areas are stock verification in depots, stores depots, stock verification in open line units and stock verification in construction. Now individually we will see how we conduct it each of these branches. Stock verification is depot. <coughs> depot always it has material which is purchased and kept there. And this material wherever it, uh, it is, whenever it is received and kept in the stores depot, the purchaser or, or the supplier he will hand over the material to the stores depot, he will take acknowledgement and his job is over. Now this material is stored in the depots. Each depot will have four, five, six or seven parts. So similar type of material is generally going to one particular third part. All electrical items will go to one part. All SNT related items will go to one part. All lubricants, oils, all those things will go to one part. Like that they have designed uh, uh, parts in a stores depot. So each depot will have five or six or sometimes more also parts. So what we are doing is we are conducting stock verification in these parts. Material is new material available there. This material has neither been charged off to revenue head or it is not charged off to capital head also. It is just kept in a stores in stock suspense. It is kept in a suspense account where it will lie for some time, say for six months or so. And before that, before six months, somebody will come and take the material. So when we are issuing the material, at that time we will book it either to the revenue expenditure or to capital expenditure, depending on the intent submitted by the uh, person who is drawing the material. So every person, when he wants to draw the material, he will place an intent. He will indicate for which work it is uh, to be used. He will give allocation and all those things. So based on that, after issuing the material, we will book it to that expenditure. So till such time, it is kept only as a store suspense account, stores in stock. This material is available in stock, therefore it is called stores in stock. It is a suspense account, it is a capital suspense account. And because we cannot identify it whether it will be used for revenue work or for capital work, we classify them on the basis of their usage. Now costly items, we classify them as A category items. That is where the annual usage value, that is in one year how much worth of one particular item we will be using. So that way we uh, arrive at the annual usage value. And annual usage value, if it is above certain limit, it may differ from railway to railway. I will give example of South Central Railway. Any item which is used over 40 lakhs in one particular year. So that item we will classify it as A category item. Because it is a costly item, 
because uh, the price is very high, we conduct the verification once in six months. That is two verifications every financial year. So A category item once in six months. That is the periodicity fixed in chapter 32 of stores code. B category, yes, they are also costly items, but their range is between 6 lakhs to 40 lakhs. That is the range on South Central Railway. It may differ from railway to railway. So B category items are also costly items, but here the range is very large. That is from 6 lakhs to 40 lakhs you are giving. So these items we call them as B category items and B category items are to be verified every year. Similarly, there is another category called C category items. In C category items, <coughs> the value is less. The annual usage value, that is AAC value, is less. That is, we are using below 6 lakhs each item in one particular financial year. So, these items will be more in number, but the value is less. Therefore, we have classified them as C category. Here, the categorization is based on the annual usage value. Please, please be very clear with this. Annual usage value. How much you are, we are using in one particular year. So once it is done, then we will have A, B and C category. A category, always high value items. Once in six months is our periodicity of verification. B category, every year. And C category, once in two years. So once in two years means how do we divide these items? Nothing if there are 100 items available, C category item in a depot. 50 we will take up this year and 50 will come up in the next financial year. The first 50 will come up in the third year again. So that is once in two years period. So we maintain like that. Go on live, yeah. Yes, sir. So this. This is how we maintain periodicity or it is given in the stores code chapter 32. A category once in six months, B category every year and C category once in two years. Open line verification. Now we will come to the second branch open line verification. Here, here the material is already drawn either for a revenue work or for a capital work. Drawn from the stores depots. So, a SSC PV will draw the material from a store's depot, giving an indent for supply of that material for revenue expenditure, for maintenance work. If it is for maintenance work, it will be shown under revenue. If it is for any additional creation of uh, capacity or any additional work or capital work, then it will be shown for capital work. It will be shown as capital stores. So the allocation is given at the time of attending. So <coughs> if the material is brought for capital stores, then separate books will be maintained for that particular work. I told you track renewal works, they all come under capital works. So track renewal, they will be taken up under capital. MAS, it is also called as material and site account. So MAS works or capital works. So for that, what particular work, what all the material required, that will be supplied to the PWI. For that, he will maintain a separate set of books. And after completion of the work, these books will be closed and if there is any balance of material, it will be transferred to revenue material, revenue records. So capital stores, because the work commences and closes within a short period of time, say, say three to four months or five months or six months, we will conduct the verification every year. Here the important point is, when the work is in progress, we may not be able to conduct physical verification because some portion of the material is under uh, contractor's account, some material is under railway's account. So when the work is completed, at that time we will have full knowledge of how much material is received, how much is issued to the contractor, how much is received back from the contractor. So all these accounts are checked after closure of the work, after certification of bills and other things. And then we will conduct the verification and that is capital stores and the periodicity is every year. Second is regular maintenance work of existing assets that is revenue stores, uh, paints and lubricants, oils, diesel oil, everything will come under this. Even uh, small repairs that take place on track, all those will come under this. So here the, it's a continuous process. It goes on the gang 
gang men they will be working the ssp way or the jep way and his team of gang gang men and gang mates they will be regularly working on this track renewal works or track maintenance works so the material is regularly used for on a daily basis and these are called revenue material they are for regular maintenance of existing assets and this verification takes place once in two years so capital stores every year revenue stores once in two years then dead stock and dnp another category is there dead stock means all furniture fittings who will come under let me try to come there okay so let's go all this dead stock and tnp they will come once in 3 years and uh, uh, tools and plants are supplied to all pv units for maintenance of work you must have seen whenever you go on go along the track or on the train some gangmen will be carrying some tools all those are supplied by railways account is maintained by the ssc pv and they are handed over personally to the gangmen to do his regular duties so all those those are called tools and plants they will have some machines also like track drilling machines cutting machines grinding machines so all that welding machines all this will come in dead stock and dnp furnitures that is almiras tables chairs everything will come from at dead stock similarly nowadays every unit is supplied with a computer and computer peripherals all that will also come under that so all the material which are regularly supplied for maintenance of office they are called as dead stock furniture fittings everything will come tools and plant for maintenance work machines all that will come under dead stock and tnp category here the transaction is not much once 10 machines are supplied to a pwd unit those machines will be in use for next 3 years 4 years 5 years so uh, not much of change or not much of transaction there so here the verification periodicity is fixed at once in 3 years so in revenue open line verification you are having three different years of verification one is every year next is once in two years and third is once in three years so this is about uh, open line verification in construction because everything is capital so as we have seen in our earlier slide <coughs> everything is capital stores everything is every year so same way construction is all capital so all the units are verified in three that is the periodicity about verification stock verification some changes will take place or some say changes are these are broad classifications <coughs> additionally some more instructions will come from board to focus on one particular type of item where the transactions are very huge or on a daily basis lot of transactions take place say one example i can give you is bedrolls all ac coaches are supplied with bedrolls and uh, these bedrolls are available under one ssc bedrolls under mechanical department so he will maintain the bedrolls he will hand over to the contractor to supply in train that contractor after returning of the train he will hand over back all the used linen to uh, ssc and from there it is sent for uh, laundry again for washing and uh, laundry purpose so like that account is maintained here the transactions are very high say for instance a major station from where nearly 25 trains depart every day 25 or more so so many uh, ac coaches will be there each train will have five or six ac coaches so each coach say 60 uh, 65 uh, uh, sets have to be given return again they have to give 65 so 130 per coach like that for five coaches and like that for one train you arrive at total about 2500 to 3000 bedrolls and for 25 trains it will be some 50000 or 60000 so that is the volume they handle every day and again all this will be received next day whenever the train returns and they have to be handed over to laundry for washing purpose and again from laundry they have received back in ssc's office so there is heavy transaction going on daily basis therefore these units specific orders are there to take up verification every year that is where the transactions are very high volumes are very high there we conduct bedroll specifically we conduct the verification 
the brain. So this is basically for uh, the person who wants to intend some material from stores depot. Material is kept in the stores depots. So when a workshop is there and there is a stores depot attached to the workshop, so what he will do is he will prepare a combined issue note. Combined issue note means it will have both indenting portion on the same file, left side, and supply portion on the right side, same page. So he will he will indent what all material he requires, what quantity he requires. All other details he will fill up. Supplier portion is filled in by the stores department. And they will prepare all these supply vouchers and issue notes and other things. And nowadays, all these are now generated through... Uh, there is a small spelling mistake, please. I'll correct it, of course. So these uh, <coughs> supplies are... Nowadays, indenting is being done through IMMS. Manual method of indenting is not being accepted. So they have to place an indent through the system. And that system is called Integrated Material Management System. Stores, depots, stores department working on this IMMS module. All the depots, their entire data is available on this module. And this module is extended to the custodians also. That is the person who want material who will be using the material. So this module is extended to them. So they will place an intent through the system and that intent will come to the depot. Depot will process it. Then the person will come and physically take the material. So that is the only change. Previously, that intenting was manual. Now, intenting is through system. <laughs> From field units also, that is PWI on uh, uh, in sections or SSC, uh, mechanical or SSC electrical. They will also now place the intent through IMMS only. Previously they were giving manually, but now intent has to be placed manually, not manually, through system, that is IMMS system. So this IMMS module is extended to the user end also. There is another method that is coming up now. Okay, is still under, uh, and it has been introduced in some major units or major uh, storekeepers. Each department they have selected few and they are in use. And uh, this is called a user depot module or UDM. So it is still in trial stage and only major units of each department have migrated to UDM. So presently what they are doing, those who have migrated, they are maintaining all the accounts in UDM module. So they will uh, maintain the accounts. So instead of maintaining manual ledgers, all the accounts are now in the system. So the moment you add some quantity, the addition takes place in the system and it will show the total balance. So that is the advantage of this user depot module and they will replace, new course of time they will replace all the manual registers being maintained by all the store models. It may take some time but that is the idea. <coughs> so this user depot module, <coughs> manual methods of books and ledgers will be replaced by computerized version. Now, <coughs> once it is done, <coughs> our job of Checking the ledger will come down. In the sense, computer is maintaining the account, so there is a definite source of entry or an authority under which entry can be made, and similarly, an authority under which issue can be made, issue of material. Therefore, all those authorities will be available anytime for check. And so far as stock verification is concerned, ledger balancing, totaling, carry forwards, all those things will be replaced now. All those things may not be needed. But physical verification part, that is the most important part. Physical verification part of our stock verification cannot be replaced. Only accounting in computerized model can be done. But physical verification aspect cannot be replaced. It has to be done physically only. And I gave you an example also how physically it is important to see that the description matches with the that available in the books. So that is the advantage of this user depot module that may be implemented in maybe another six months or so throughout all the zones. It is tested, it is working, but there are definitely some issues which are being attended to on a daily basis by Chris and uh, in due course of time it will be 
available to all the storeholders. <laughs> now, how exactly we do, or what exactly is the focus of our stock preparation? As I told you, all these years we had manual ledgers. So mathematical accuracy was one very very important aspect of our chip. We have seen that simple calculations are also by mistake they are posted wrongly. 10 plus 4 is posted as 16, or 10 minus 8 is posted as 8, something like that. It's a it's a mistake that happens. But unfortunately, there is no other agency which can rectify it. And the custodian, he is so busy in his work that he cannot concentrate totally on the daily, daily at each transaction. Therefore, one major part of our stock verification was checking of mathematical accuracy, carrying forward. Sometimes it's deliberate also. So instead of carrying 25 numbers, carry it over to page number so and so. In that carrying over, they will write 20 there. So here it was 25, there it is 20. From there they will maintain the accounts. So like that, some mistakes will be there. Sometimes it is deliberate, sometimes it's a mistake. Whatever it is, our job was to check at the accuracy of mathematical transaction or accuracy of uh, additions and some sort of uh, these things also, usage also. And carry forward, all those things were all part of manual methods of accounting, which are still there, but it may be replaced once the UDM module or the computerized module takes place totally. Second thing is checking the physical availability. So as I told you, our verification is always physical. So we will go by the availability of material physically, what is available that is important. Physically, what is available that is important and we will certify what we physically see. Third and most important check of our stock verification is the propriety check. <laughs> <coughs> it's called the propriety aspect. Propriety aspect means whether the transaction is correctly shown. Up. That is the most important check of our transaction. Now, although it may be technical, but let me give you an example. If, if there is one particular PWI unit and he is maintaining track and in his jurisdiction there are two or three stations. In one particular station yard, there is a line which is away from the platform lines and those lines were provided earlier to place if there is any sick wagon or some, uh, let's say some problem is there with the wagon, those wagons will be detached and kept in the siding. Mechanical people will subsequently come and they will attend to that, repair it and then again it will be attached to some other train and it will be sent. So to place some of these sick wagons or any other emergencies, some small lines were provided to each station yard. That line length is only 300 meters. 300 meters means it is less than half kilometer. Half kilometer is 500 meters. So it is less than that. 300 meters line which can say hold about 10 wagons or 10 coaches, something like that. There. For emergency purposes, each station will have some additional lines. So now, if suppose that particular track is also to be renewed and a new rail is to be placed there and old rail has to be removed. So the person who is doing this work or the SSE who is uh, overseeing this work, 300 meters track means two rails will be there. So 600 meters of rail is required. Instead of that he is showing 1000 meters issued for renewal of this particular siding. So 300 plus 300, 600 meters rail only he should have issued for renewal. Whereas he has issued 1000 running meters. So that check whether the issue is matching with the work executed or not, that aspect is checked only by stock verifiers or by SS. And that is called the propriety of tra transaction. Whether the transaction shown fits Hello. So the proprietary aspect is checked.
Similarly, in workshops also, uh, replacement items will be there. Then have to be issued per engine. So there is a loop shed. Ten are required to be replaced in each engine. And five engines come in a week's time. So five into ten, 50 items must have been issued for that particular uh, maintenance of uh, locals in that particular week. But 100 are shown as issued. So more locals should have come. If we go into those books, it will show only 10 locos have come, 5 per loco or 5 locos have come, 10 per loco, whatever it is. More have been issued than required. So that is what is called property aspect and that check is possible only when you examine the transaction. That is most important aspect of a stock verification. Many frauds have been detected in this particular uh, check and they have led to uh, recovery from huge amounts from the custodians. They have led to recovery of uh, uh, money from settlement use also of the custodians. So stock verification plays a very important role in checking the propriety aspect of the transaction. Now we will come to the actual procedure. It's, we can just rush through this without much of So whenever we are taking up any unit for verification, what we will do is, what is the material supplied to that unit? Suppose if the unit is to be verified, what is the material that has been supplied from various depots? That information we will gather first and then we will proceed to that unit. At the moment we go there, we will check whether all these receipts have been accounted or not. So we go to a depot, from there we will ask, we have this particular PWI, how much of material is issued to you. All these PWIs, all these unit holders, they are identified by a consigning code. And if we ask the details, the consigning code wise, details are given immediately by the system. So we will collect that and that much of material must have been accounted by this particular testing. That is called receipt check. So the moment we go to a unit, we will go with the available or we will have readily available what all material is taken by that storeholder. We will go and check whether all that material has been accounted or not. In case there is a difference, we will ask for explanation. Okay, so and so material is also issued to you. There is an acknowledgement and it is showing your consigning code why it is not accounted. So he will check his books and no, no sir, it is received, maybe a mistake, not accounted. We will check that, we will update the account, we will account it. So, first check is receipt account. Material, what all is received, should be first accounted in his books. From there, how they are used, we will check again. But basically, receipt vouchers, receipt transactions and receipt of material has to be properly accounted. That is the first check we conduct whenever we go to the unit. Now, these receipt vouchers will be linked to the books he is maintaining. There is a book called DMTR that is called Daily Material Transaction Register. It is a continuous register in the sense it will show transaction of all types, that is receipt transaction, issue transaction, both will be shown in the same book and they will be serially numbered. So, these are the first entries are made in DMTR. From there, subsequently, they are transferred to the individual ledgers. So, if suppose paint, red color paint, 25 liters is received. So that 25 liters, receipt of 25 liters paint will be mentioned in the DMTR first. And from the DMTR it will be taken to the respective ledger. And each ledger will have account for each item. And a page is allotted for each item. After that another page is allotted to another item. So in page where red paint is accounted, there we will again check whether this 25 liters is accounted or not. So like that, so we connect the receipts. That is first important aspect of checking. Then after that, we will start the physical verification aspect that is recording of inventory. Recording of inventory, always remember, is not verified whenever he goes for verification. The custodian or the unit holder who is available there or whose uh, unit is being verified, that particular unit holder also will accompany in giving inventory. It's not that we will simply go along the track and note down. No, we will note down everything in his presence. He has to show us the meeting. We do not know where he has kept the meeting. So we will ask him to come. He will accompany 
He will tell us where the material is there, what is the material, what is the classification of the material, whether it is new material or released material, everything he will tell. We will note down as per that. The verification aspect we will do. If he says, sir, this is one type of rail, we will check whether it is that type of rail or not. We have our own methods of checking. But whether it is class 1 or class 2 or class 3 that we cannot identify from the material, only he has to take. So like that we will record inventory in the presence of the custodian. So he will also sign in the field book of stock verifier. For every verification, a stock verifier always maintains the field book. He carries it, it is supplied, it is a printed book, it is supplied to the stock verifiers. He will carry it with him, he will note down the material that he has seen. Along with that, the painter also goes, if it is a PV unit, the painter will also go and they will mark on it, stock verification 2021-22, like that they will mark, so that same thing is again not produced for verification. And they will, uh, location wise, they will go and note down the inventory, field book is filled in by the stock verifier and having shown that material, the custodian will also sign in the field book. So now you please understand inventory is presented by the custodian, noted down by stock verifier. Seen and noted down by stock verifier. So like that they will record the inventory of all the material uh, that is spread in the entire jurisdiction of that custodian. And after recording of the inventory, we will come back to the unit. Our physical inventory portion is over, that is in field, that is online. If there is a store maintained in the office premises of the uh, store holder, that also they will take inventory. And after that, now we are having, we are now ready with the uh, inventory. That is material we have physically seen that recorded in our books. Now, one similar type of material might be available in three, four locations. Say, for instance, rails. There are different categories of rails for 60 kg rail or 32 kg rail. So 60 kg rail is available in four or five locations. So all that will be brought into one place. And that is called summarize. So we will summarize the inventory and once the summaries are ready, then we will compare the summaries with the book balance, the books he is maintaining, the lectures he is maintaining. It can be manual lectures, mostly they are manual lectures or it can be computerized accounting. Whatever it is, we will check after we complete the summary, then we will check the ground balance that is available in summary with book balance. If there is any difference between ground balance and book balance, we will go by the ground balance because we have seen and recorded. So if ground balance is showing 10 drums of 25, 20 litre paint, whereas book is showing 22 drums of 20 litres. So two drums are short, it will become a discrepancy. If the book is less and ground is more, then it becomes excess. So both are discrepancies only. So actually it should match. What is maintained in books should match with what is available in ground. If there is a discrepancy, it can be more, it can be less. Both will be treated as a discrepancy only and then we will issue a stock sheet to him for the differences in stocks. Wherever there is a discrepancy for those items, we will issue a stock sheet. All other items where there is no difference, we will certify as available and each item will be certified by the stock verifier. If there are 200 items, each page will be certified by the stock verifier. He will write stock verified for the year 2021-22 and physically available 20, 27, whatever it is, both are written in words as well as figures. So like that we will do the certification for all the items where there is a difference that will come in the stock sheet. Because this summary is prepared based on the inventory given by the custodian and this summary is used to prepare the stock sheet. The stock sheet is signed by the custodian also and that is he will accept the differences and three copies we will prepare. One copy immediately is handed over to the uh, custodian. It will have signature of stock verifier, it will have signature of the custodian. Both will be there and we will hand over one copy to him and after that the 
verification is completed of that particular unit. That is stock verification. Now, whenever we are going to a unit for verification, it is also a sort of inspection. So there can be some other things which we observe there. Say the scrap is not properly stacked, or old materials are lying without use. There are a lot of items which have not been used for a long time. So all these are observations. There is no difference in book balance or ground balance of that material. But it is lying there unused for one year. It is lying there unused for 18 months. So all those items we will try to highlight in an inspection report. And that inspection report is called the narrative report. So the inspection portion or the inspection observations of a stock verifier, they are brought out in narrative report. The physical differences are brought out in the stock sheet. So at the end of every stock verification, the stock verifier will prepare a completion report stating that so much of so much of the so and so unit has been verified for revenue stores or for dead stock and DNP or for MAS account. The category which he has verified, he will write like that. The custodian, that is the SSC, who is giving the verification, he will also give a certificate stating that I have presented all the material for verification. So like that, a completion report and a completion certificate is prepared and then all these papers are handed over to the ISA. Stock verification of that unit is complete. That is actual physical verification aspect. I've got some uh, narrative report here. So narrative report, narrative report is the inspection report. It is just like an inspection report where observation of the particular uh, of that particular ASV stock verifier they are brought out. Say if there is there are some items which have not been used for long time, they are lying there in the books in the custody. They are available, but they are not in use. So why to keep them like that if they are not required? So he will point out that so and so items are lying for a long time. They are not been used. Instead, you can transfer it to some other unit where they can be used. Like that, he will make an observation. Similarly, some vouchers will be there which have been materially sent to some other unit, but the acknowledgements are not received. So, all those types of transactions also will be brought out in the rate These are observations. Stock or the scrap material is not properly stacked. It is just lying scattered all over the place. So there is possibility of losing some material, there is possibility of missing some material, some material may get uh, buried under the soil. So instead of losing that material, the stock verifier will point out in the form of a temperature report. So narrative report is observations of the stock verifier or the ISA, whoever is going for verification. That is narrative. Paraphrase remarks have to be given by the uh, custodian for all these observations. It is not that we are just observing and leaving it. We will forward all this narrative report and stock sheet if any to the controlling officer and we will get the reports or the remarks for them. We will come to that next. In, this is about open line verification what I have told you. Now this is depot verification. Depot verification we have already seen. We do it category wise that is A category or B category or C category. There is always a receipt section in a depot where material is initially received in the receipt section. From there, it is sent for inspection. If it is pre-inspected, then it will come with an inspection certificate. So two aspects are there for inspection. It can be pre-inspected, that is we appoint some of our agencies like RDSO or rights to conduct inspection on behalf of railways. So they will do the inspection and they will issue a certificate and the material will be supplied along with inspection certificate. At that time, we don't have to conduct inspection again. We will simply accept the picking. Otherwise, material will be supplied, it will be inspected by railway officials. Until such time, the material will be lying in the receipt section. So we will do verification of receipt section also. The individual cards, that is individual pin cards, they are called each PL number, each price ledger number, one item is maintained, one pin card is maintained. For each item, one PL number will be there, price ledger number. On that pin card, they will write whether it belongs to A category item or B or C. What is the PL number? 
what is the description of that PL number, all those things will be returned in the PIN card and then the balance and the transactions will be there in the PIN card. So these PIN cards are now available in system also, that is computerized PIN cards are available. Instead of manual, we are maintaining it in computer. So we don't have to post any additional transaction there. If you make a receipt transaction, automatically it is posted in the PIN card. Similarly, if you make an issue transaction, automatically it is posted in the PIN card. So the computerized method of accounting, that is the advantage. So PIN cards also we will check. Then we will prepare stock sheet. Whether there is difference or not, we will certify it as uh, book balance how much, ground balance how much. Nowadays, we are doing verification here. It's a very important thing. It's a change after introduction of this IMMS module in the stores department. Uh, and stores the co-working. ISS and ASVs, that is stock verification wing, has been provided with a window. We have to log in with our digital signature. And once we log in, automatically a stock verification window appears there. There we will feed or fill up what are the PL numbers we are verifying. For each PL number, you have to write one. So one, one time you have to fill up. The moment you feed the PL number, automatically description and other things will come. And then you can feed only the quantity you have verified. That is, ground balance only you can feed in that. Book balance will not be visible to you. So suppose you do verification and you find that 20 numbers of one particular item are available. So you have seen 20, therefore you will feed 20. Whether 20 is matching with the books or not, that system will take care. And if there is a difference, it will generate a structure. So that is changed in the computerized method of stock verification. A window is provided, there we will log in. The moment we log in, that window will pop up. We will share stock verification picture and there we will feed the stock the PL number which we have verified and immediately after that we will feed the ground balance. At the moment we feed the ground balance and say okay, it goes to the DMS that is the depot uh, person that is storage department person. <laughs> We will have a 10 minute discussion also. We will have short break. We are just completing this. So, this is uh, the stock verification. Uh, uh, ground balance is fed into the system. Automatically, system will compare with the book balance. If there is any difference, it will generate this option. That is the depot verification. Now, these are some just pictures for you. You can see the rails. All our staff are there. <coughs> There is a lot of vegetation there. There are definitely some problems in locating and identifying. Rains are there everywhere and once rains are there, these bushes will come up. So it is a little bit tough job so far as failed uh, aspect of stock verification. Sometimes you do not know how much length is there for this rain. So we will ask them to clear all the bushes and other things. And some material will be non-descriptive. We cannot make up what is this. So this is this book what he is holding. He is our stock verifier, and that particular thing is called a field book. It is a printed book. Numbered page numbers are there. They are also printed. Page number one to ninety-nine, and there they will go on writing the material what all they see and take down the inventory. These are just for information. Now, once a unit is completed, the stock sheet is there. Suppose uh, for 10 items, differences have come. Out of those 10 items, 7 are having shortages and 3 are having excess. So, excess means more than books. Physically available more than books is excess. Physically available less than books is shortage. So, 10 items are having uh, difference. So, for these 10 items, a stock sheet is prepared. So, the moment a stock sheet is handed over to the ISA, the stock verifier, his job is over, then he will proceed for verification of another unit. So, the stock, uh, the ISAs, they will forward these stock sheets to the controlling officer of that uh, unit. That is, if it is a PWI, we will forward it to the senior DEL. If it is an electrical unit, we will forward to the senior DEE. Like that, to the controlling officer, we will forward. The idea is, the controlling officer should know that so and so unit has been verified and there are so many different. <laughs> Yeah.
DRMs also, some DRM level meetings are also conducted on this. And then when finally the remarks will come, we will scrutinize the remarks. The scrutiny of remarks takes place like this. <clears throat> For shortages, there are four methods of examining the shortages or shortages or accepting the remarks. First method is explaining the shortages. The custodian will clearly explain, yes, sir, this particular shortage has come because I have executed this work, but the quantities I used have not been reduced from the books. He will give details of his uh, field book where the work has been completed. The field book will have the details of material used there, but on that day he could not reduce the material from the lectures and subsequently it was forgotten. So like that he will link it to the work done, explain the shortages, usually providing all the supporting documents, that is field book of the custodian, then we will also ask for the transaction lectures on that particular day whether there was any other transaction which has been entered whether he is claiming it twice, all those things will be examined. And in case the explanation given is correct and supported by vouchers, then we will accept for the shortages. Those remarks are accepted and shortages are closed. Second is, I should show you the, some photographs where a lot of vegetation is there, a lot of bushes are there. So material is sometimes buried inside that and they are not able to clear that particular uh, uh, bushes at the time of verification. So some material they could not produce for verification. Subsequently when they clear those bushes, they will notice that some more material is there. So those material, there is a provision for them to account it again. And that material they can account through a departmental stock verification. That is, they will conduct a stock verification and they will take into account and that departmental stock sheet, it is called a departmental stock sheet, that will be signed by an officer as if he has seen that material and that material is accounted. And then whatever shortage we have booked, that much has come back to the ledger again. It is found and uh, accounted in the ledger. Therefore, if it is signed by an officer, we will accept them duly after verification of the ledgers. So that is second method of closing of uh, shortages. Third is, in case one and two are not possible and the custodian is not able to give any remarks, then we will ask the executive to conduct some inquiry why uh, the shortages have come and they will fix who is responsible for the shortages and from their salaries the recoveries will be made and whenever we make the recovery sometimes they are staggered recoveries in the sense uh, so 5000 to be recovered that means it will be recovered in 5 installments of 1000 rupees so we will wait till the recovery is ordered we will watch for the recovery from the pay slips or the pay bills in accounts office and then we will close this item once the recovery is completed. Fourth is one, two, three are not possible. <laughs> right off of material, some some nature, by nature, some material are exposed. If they are exposed to weather conditions, they may lose their value. The rubber products. They will not have any salvage value also, they will not have any sale value also. So such items, uh, breakable items or uh, say spillage type of items, coins and other things. And whenever you are issuing retail, issues are there. So every time you issue 5 liters, 5 liters, there is possibility of losing some 100 ml or something like that. So over a period of 2 years, that becomes about 30 liters or 40 liters. So such things are not possible to avoid. Therefore, those for those items, we will ask them to go for right now. So the write-off is resorted even in case where there are some natural calamities or fire or anything where nobody is held responsible. In such cases also, we go for write-off and uh, <coughs> for write-off there are different powers which are given in the model SOP. So these are the four methods through which we can accept the shortages. Similarly, there are two methods in which we can accept the excess items, remarks for the excess items. First is we will ensure that the receipt particulars are but they are provided. They will find by computers excess. We will ask them the computer cannot come like that. It has to be supplied by some agency. It has to be purchased through some purchase order. So we will ask for all those documents. And after connecting all the documents, if he is not maintained the amount properly, then this excess has resulted in because of that. If that is established, we will accept that item for provided he keeps all the papers, recent particulars and we will verify from our accounts office also. Similarly, class 2, some items are there, that is class 2, class 3. 
class 2 means uh, there are three classes class 1 are new material class 2 are items which are used but again they can be used they are removed but they can be used again they are class 2 class 1 is always new class 2 are which are used once but they can be used again that is class 2 and class 3 are unserviceable and they, they cannot be used for that purpose so like that three classes are there so this assessment of class is purely visual and then the SSC will tell sir you take this into class 3 account you take this into class 2 account so finally there can be a change in that and uh, if we connect a stock sheet is there with 100 running meters of range class 2 short and 100 running meters of range class 3 excess then these two can be interlinked due to the reason that it's a visual assessment on the class 2 and class 3 and like that also we can accept remarks for short range. this is so far as stock verification is concerned acceptance of remarks is concerned then we also maintain a monthly progress report how many stock sheets have been issued in a month how many stock sheets have been closed in a month on what which departments we have issued like that we maintain a particularly uh, department wise and division wise account it also shows the age of the stock sheet whether it is issued in 2012, 13 or 14, 15 like that we go on asking uh, the remarks and all these reports they are submitted to railway board once in six months that is called half yearly annual report goes to the railway board so it's not that everything is lying within the zone we are sending the details to railway board also within the zone every month the position is sent to AGM it is sent to all the PHODs of the, uh, the department so if each of PHOD even get position of three or four divisions or so like that division wise details are sent to PHOD similarly we are sending details to the ADRMs of the division and there will be periodical review meetings they will uh, they will be held by the ADRMs and then they will uh, discuss and give targets yes you have to clear this talk sheet within next two months next three months so like that uh, our uh, man managerial information system that is called MIS is prepared and it is given to all the departments and half yearly once it is going to be reported. That is about stock verification. Now we will have, yes, you can ask any doubts. Sir, can you can unmute yourself? Sir, uh, please share in the Zoom, sir. This is your PPT. What's up, sir? Uh -huh. uh, because it will reach to all of the uh, participants. Uh, Share means how it? Yeah, please click the chart, sir. Chart. Chart. Okay. And uh, click file, right side. And before that, you please close the PPT in the uh, desktop, sir. Okay. Otherwise, it is not possible. Or I will mail it to you, sir. And uh, click the file, sir. Click the file. Ah, uh, yes. And it asks the destination. Then uh, please select the destination. I close the PPT. Yeah. Uh, and uh, please click the file in the chat box. File. Chat box. Okay. The chat box click the file option. How are you Sir, uh, can you mail me? I will mail it to you. Sir. That's why I asked uh, in your box mail. Ah. Yeah, it is ready, I will just mail it. Uh, participants, please ask any queries. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, how, how can a stock sheet can be closed by departmental stock verification? Departmental stock verification. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Shortage of a stock. 
Department of Stock Verification means uh, conducted by the respective department. Yes, class attending, right? Not account stock verification. Uh, uh, so, uh, whenever a stock verification is conducted by a departmental officer, those uh, yeah. also the differences will be given to accounts office only. And remarks have to be furnished for the differences by custodian. And it will be treated as a stock sheet by the accounts office only. Hey sir, I, I want to know when the stock verifier I issue the stock sheet for short sale. Okay. Then, then some departmental stock, some departmental officer has uh, issued DVS for closure of that shortage of a stock sheet. Is it possible? Okay. okay. DVS, DVS, yes sir. I know, I know. Departmental stock verification sheet, okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, no, that is uh, in case he finds the material after our verification. Some material yes, is looked as short. Uh, and uh, that material he has located by conducting some verification, the officer has located that material what is looked as short. Then uh, in account it again, there has to be a voucher to account the material. And that uh, voucher is called departmental stock verification. DVS, what you call it that? DVS. We call it as departmental stock sheet. DVS. So uh, both are same. Departmental verification sheet that will be prepared by the control officer who is conducting the verification. Department officer, not accounts officer. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that, that, uh, that will be signed. Uh, that will be signed and forwarded to accounts office. Uh, and based on that, we will again verify whether the material is counted in the ledger or not, and then we will close it. Yeah, time, time, time limit is there, sir, for issue the department. Time limit is just, no, suppose there is no that time one, limit. No time limit? Yeah. I want to know, suppose that uh, one stock fire has issued a stock sheet in the month of January, then okay. after eight months, is a depot officer or department officer can issue the deviation without the vouchers, without the acknowledgement of sources of the ship of vouchers? There is, first of all, there is no time limit for conducting stock verification. That can be done any time by the controlling officer. Okay. Okay, okay. We are concerned about the shortages mentioned in one particular stock sheet. So, okay. we, we keep on reminding them that you so and so shortage is there, so and so stock sheet is outstanding. So, to check the correctness, they may conduct a stock verification. Uh, then they can, uh, and even departmental officers, when they conduct stock verification, they will cover only few items. They cannot cover all the items. Right, right, sir. Right. So, whenever this item comes and the uh, material what is not available is produced, again or shown again or retrieved and this happens very frequently in PV units because a lot right. of vegetation is there sometimes ballast will be dumped on material night times of lorry will come that he will dump the ballast and go away so the material might be there under that so this is possible and uh, it has to be accounted through a store, departmental stock verification sheet and entered into the ledger once it is entered into the ledger he has to again show it again next time Therefore, we will accept that as uh, remarks as correct. If it is, if it is right, by right? uh, so, sir, I, I want to know concern concern voucher should be attached on that DBS. Yeah, concerned voucher is DSV itself. On the DSV. Uh, DSV itself is the concern voucher and explaining explanation. Uh, so and so stock verification department right. stock verification is conducted by so and so officer on so and so date and so much of material is retrieved and accounted back. Like that they will give a narration and that ESV itself will be prepared. And that will be given. That itself is a good Yes sir, okay sir. Achita, sir, what is the CRM? Please explain. How sir, is scrap cell disposed of? Is scrap cell disposed of? How? Uh, house, house, CRRM. CRRM. CRRM, yes sir. Yeah, CRRM is 